Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This is going to be another short video and coincidentally another solar panel video. This time it's from Booz RV's new line of N-Type Topcon solar panels. This is a rigid panel as opposed to their flexible uh, type and their portable type panels. So this is really designed for people who want to leave the panel out in the weather pretty much 24 seven and not have to worry about any kind of weather resistance or weather damage to the panel. So this is designed to be out or on top of a you know, RV or a camper, um, that kind of thing. Now this particular one is a bifacial. So if you can get it up off the surface, it can collect ambient light from the back as well to improve the total output of the panel. Now one of the interesting features about this N-type panel is that it's a little bit smaller, about 13% smaller in surface area than their regular 100 watt rigid solar panel and that means that if you're going to be using this in an application especially where you have a limited amount of say rooftop space on an rv or camper this extra uh, 13 percent reduction in, in surface area might enable you to get another panel or two into your configuration so it might be worth a look on that grounds now these n-type panels also do use a 16 bus bar design uh, as opposed to the more common five bus bar or even nine bus bar and more bus bars is better because it reduces the overall resistance and gives you more efficient power transfer across the solar cells now this is what you would call a uh, a higher voltage lower current solar cell or solar panel and so by that i mean the voltage open circuit on this i believe is 35 0.7 volts plus or minus about five percent so keep that in mind if you have a, a power station if you're planning on using this with the power station you want to make sure that the maximum input voltage on your charge controller is at least 37 or maybe even 40 volts uh, so that you don't run into a problem where you actually damage a charge controller because a, a lot of the smaller power stations will top out at like 28 or even 30 volts and you would not want to hook this up to one of those kinds of power stations because you very likely will damage a charge controller. And because the voltage is higher, you actually have a lower current rating on this panel. So the short circuit current rating on this is just maybe a little over three amps, maybe 3.2, 3.5 amps. I'll, I'll put a little graphic up here to show you what the actual specs are. And you can compare that to the 200 watt panel version of this. And the pricing on these is actually quite good from Bouj RV. They're only just maybe about a dollar a watt, maybe slightly higher than a dollar, uh, dollar per watt of rated output and uh, they're if they give me a discount code I will I'll put one in the description I'm not sure if I'll have that or not but check in the video description if you want to if you're interested in checking these out and make sure you use that code because that'll get you your lowest out the door price if in fact I have one for you all right let me flip it over and show you the back side of this panel all right so as you can see I mentioned this is a bifacial panel so you can actually see the cells rather than just being a solid black surface and this allows these cells to gather ambient light from the back it does have a an an black anodized aluminum frame and it is pre-drilled here already. On each of the long sides, there are four uh, pre-drilled screw holes there. So that helps keep you from having to, to do custom drilling. Uh, you might still have to, depending on your situation, but it is nice to have some holes that you can tap into. And then it does have standard MC4 connectors. And these are about three feet in length each. And I do like the fact that this negative lead has these little squeeze tabs on it. It makes it a lot easier to disconnect if you need to, to disconnect it rather than trying to dig your fingers in there. It's kind of a little bit more convenient. All right, let's go ahead and put this thing through the paces and see how it performs. We'll uh, get a full sun test and some shading tests and just kind of see what the impact is in a couple of different configurations. And um, yeah, we got kind of a partly cloudy, partly hazy Sunday, so I'm not sure we're going to get great, perfect performance out of today's uh, environment, but we'll do what we can. All right, just doing a quick open circuit voltage test here. See, I got the leads and the positive negative tips of the MC4 connectors. And my meter, if you can make that out, is showing 34 volts. So as the sun is coming out, it just escalated a little bit. So voltage does change slightly when the sun comes out, but the current is the thing that changes the most. So let's uh, connect these MC4 connectors together and we'll do a quick uh, short circuit current test. All right, let's check the uh, short circuit current. I've got the MC4 connectors connected to themselves, so I've shorted it out. And I just kind of wanted to show you, the sun is actually behind a cloud right now. I know which cloud it's behind, but I can't see even the outline of the sun through the cloud. That's how thick it is. And that is why we're not even getting an amp right now. We're getting 0.72 amps. And that short circuit current rating, as I mentioned, I think is 3.4 amps. So uh, let's just keep an eye on this. And I wanna show you how dramatically the current changes as the sun actually comes out from behind the clouds. All right, the sun is emerging. And you can see we're already up more than double where we were before. We are approaching 2.7 amps. 
and that's with slightly hazy sun. So not pristine conditions in the sky right now. We are moving in and out of the clouds, so you can see how the current is affected by that. So hopefully you found that interesting. Let's go ahead and hook this panel up to a power station and just kind of see what kind of output we're getting from it. All right, the sun is starting to creep back out. And again, it's kind of hazy sun, so we don't really have pristine conditions, as I said. But let's uh, just take a quick look here. We are pulling in 62 watts. And I thought this was a decent power station to test this panel on since this particular input requires a minimum of 30 volts in order to start charging. It's either 30 or maybe 24 volts. But in any case, yeah, you can see we are getting 60, 61 watts. So I'll try to keep an eye on this throughout the day and just kind of see where we top out. I just don't know if we've got good sky conditions. It's very humid and hazy out today, and this might, might be as good as we're going to do. All right, now I've kind of lifted it up off the ground to give it a chance to take advantage of some of that bifacial gain that you can get with these panels by enabling the bottom side to get a little bit more of that reflective ambient light. So we'll see if that makes any difference. I still am not getting hardly any sun out here. It is about 80% clouds, 20% sun. So when I do get the sun, it's very brief and then it's gone. So while we're waiting for the sun, I think I'll just go ahead and mention it in this video. This is something I've said in quite a few other videos. Uh, in case you're not aware, um, what one of the ways that you can figure out how much charged capacity that you can get out of a solar panel on, an, on a good day of clear sky conditions is to use a multiplier of somewhere between four and five, maybe 4.5 if you wanna be conservative and kind of take it right down the middle. So if you take the rated output of a panel, in this case, let's say a 100 watt panel, and you multiply that by 4.5, so it would be 450 watt hours of charged capacity that you could reasonably expect to get out of a panel like this. Now you might get as much as 500 watt hours of charge capacity uh, if you live in the right conditions, so or you happen to be located in the right conditions. So you do need full sun, uh, cloudless day, basically a full day of exposure, and that's what you could expect out of a 100 watt panel. Now on a 200 watt panel, you could expect to get somewhere around uh, 950 to 1000 watt hours of charge capacity. So, you know, again, your mileage may vary somewhat depending on the actual sky conditions that you're encountering and the particular latitude that you live at. But uh, I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb. And if you want to be conservative about it, maybe multiply it by four instead of four and a half or five. But those are pretty good rules of thumb if you just want to try to estimate. Okay, just for comparison's sake, I've got a, a Jackery 100 portable solar panel here, which is one of my best outputters for a portable solar panel. And it routinely uh, will peak out at very close to rated output. So 90 to 100 watts. I've even seen it at 105 watts uh, at one particular occasion. And I've got this now going into another power station just to kind of show you the conditions. And uh, if you can make that out, we're getting 69, 70 watts. So let's compare that to the Topcon rigid panel under the same sky conditions and see what we're getting. Okay, here's the Topcon panel, 100 watts. So both ones we're looking at are rated for 100 watts and we are getting 68, 67, uh, very high 60. So we're getting very comparable output to that other uh, rated 100 watt panel that typically does better than all the other panels that I have tested, at least in the 100 watt range. So. This one is hanging tight. I think with the sky conditions I have right now, I'm not sure we're going to really do any better than that, just because there's just enough haze in the upper, upper atmosphere to keep me from really maximizing this. But that comparison does at least tell me that this is a, a good performer. Okay, let's try a shade test on this panel. So we're getting right at around 65 watts. And let's just put a branch on the corner here to simulate some shade. And let's see how badly that affects the output. Actually, we've only dropped 10 watts. That's kind of surprising. I really expected about a 50% drop on that. That's pretty impressive. Let's try putting that right in the middle, covering multiple cells. And we've still only dropped an additional four watts with that covering the, the middle of the panel. That's pretty impressive. We've only lost 15 watts total. If I take that branch off, let's see what it does. And we're back up to 65 watts. So I would say shading performance on this panel is actually 
quite good. All right, so yeah, I think that about wraps that up. I think if you're looking for a panel that gives you the most output in the smallest amount of surface area, as long as you can get this up off of the surface a little bit so it can take advantage of that bifacial gain a little bit, I think you will get pretty good results out of this panel at a very good price from Bouge RV. And because it's from Bouge RV, you don't have to buy a pallet of these. You can just get one or you can get three or six or whatever makes sense for you. Um, and you don't have to buy an entire pallet of 10 of these. So yeah, small form factor, pretty good shading performance and a pretty reasonable price. I think it's definitely worth a look if you're in the market for a rigid solar panel. And I'll leave links below, as I said, for you to go check those out if you wanna go check them out. So hopefully you found something useful in the video. If you did, consider clicking that like button for me. I'd very much appreciate it. And I do appreciate the time that you spent to watch this video with me. And I hope you'll consider joining me for the next one. Until then, have fun out there.